Hello and welcome back to the next instalment in this little series where I take you through the making of my 1820s Little Dorrit costume. If you've been following along with this project, you will know that we are now up to the sleeves. If you have no idea what I'm on about, uh, I recommend that you pause this video and actually go and watch the rest of the series first, because otherwise this is going to be a little bit random, because this video is just about sleeves. Now there are two sets of sleeves for this 1820s Little Dorrit project, a puff short sleeve and then a long undersleeve in that sort of Mary style with the ruching. And it was a lot of work and it didn't necessarily all go to plan. You may remember from the end of the last video that I had actually run out of piping cord and so I couldn't quite finish off the bodice. So I had to sort of pause the bodice and I decided that there was lots of prep work I could do on the sleeves. And that's where we begin this video. While I waited for more piping to arrive, I could turn my attention to all the cuffs and bands I had needed to make for the sleeves, as I'd already made up the piping for those before I ran out of piping for my armhole. Some of the bands needed to be attached to the sleeves flat, so I decided to pipe them all flat before sewing the cuffs up into a loop. This turned out to be a mistake. For the long sleeve cuffs, I realised that I needed to sew the cuff into a loop before I applied the piping. The wrist cuff was really small and had to function like a proper cuff, only with piping in the seams, so that was why I decided to not pipe it flat like I had the applied decorative bands. I'm not sure why I thought the short sleeve cuffs would work flat when the long sleeve cuffs wouldn't, seeing as the short sleeve cuffs are exactly the same as the long sleeve cuffs, only fractionally wider, but more on that later. In the meantime, I press that long sleeve cuff seam open before chalking on the line for the piping. I pin the piping in place, making sure to match the sewing line of the piping to the chalked on sewing line for the cuff. When I got back around to the beginning, I overlapped the edge of the piping, pivoting them up and into the seam allowance so that there wouldn't be a raw piping edge visible on the outside. I checked to make sure that doing this hadn't caused the piping to shift off the sewing line at either side of the seam. Getting this diddy cuff under the sewing machine was a huge challenge. I have really tiny wrists and I knew I needed these cuffs to be tight, but I didn't want to put an opening in them, so they still had to be big enough to get my hand through. But even with that, the cuffs were still only 19 centimeters and it was very fiddly. I sewed the two layers of the decorative bands right side together and then began turning them right side out. Now that I watch it back, I realise that at this point I had made a huge mistake in the way I was approaching the construction of those armbands. I tried to bag them out, which turned out to be a really stupid decision, because with the bulk of the piping they were almost impossible to turn, and when I did get them the right way out, they were all distorted and the edges had frayed so much that I couldn't use them at all. If you do a lot of sewing, and a lot of sewing uh, as in a lot of frequent sewing, you know, all day, every day, for weeks at a time, you will know that there are sometimes just days where everything you touch goes wrong. And I don't know what it is. I don't know why that happens. Uh, but today has been one of those days for me. <laughs> and everything has just gone wrong. And I'm just done with it, to be honest. I'm feeling, it's making me hate this project. It's now not going to be done in time for the Foundations Revealed competition, so I'm like, oh, why am I doing this? You know, I've just completely lost motivation and everything I touch has gone wrong. So I started the day. You can't see it. Hang on. I started the day by sewing the collar onto my chemisette, but I don't know if you can see that. That's the seam allowances poking up because I accidentally stitched Instead of uh, wrong side to right side, like you do when you do a collar, I put right sides together instinctively. And I've done tiny little, just absolutely minuscule mantra maker's hem. It's a really beautiful seam, mantra maker's seam even. Really tiny, close, you know, 18th century hand stitches or whatever, 19th century, you know what I mean. And I, it's, it's, it's bloody inside out and I don't have the, it's not even so much the energy, it's just the will. I just really do not want to unpick it. And so I decided to move on to finishing off the trimmings for the sleeves. And I was making up, these were to, uh, to be the sleeve bands that gather in the long sleeves. But I tried to turn them, like I shouldn't have done it. I knew that it wasn't going to work really. But um, 
And so I sewed them right sides together like this and then was going to try and turn them inside out, which was a right pain, but I thought I did it. But when it came out, it's completely warped it because this is a stretch sateen, it's got elastane in. And so it's completely warped and the um, where I had to grade the seam allowance down so much, it's uh, frayed out as well. So that'll have to go in the bin. Bless her, my mum's made me a cup of tea to try and cheer me up and it says I'd rather be in my garden. I'm feeling it right now, I'm feeling it. And so I really don't know what to do at this point. I'm really tempted to completely stop this and do something else, really simple. I've got a 1970s pinafore dress that I want to make, having seen Gwen's shenanigans video. So I, I might just sod it, I might just abandon it, resign it to the UFO, uh, UFO pile for now and come back to it at a later date. This was supposed to be a relaxing project and I tried to make it into a Foundations Revealed competition entry and it's turned out really stressful. And I don't know why I've done this to myself. So I'm thinking I might just take away all that stress, chill out a bit and um, come back to this later. Who knows? I'm definitely doing no more sewing today because anything I touch is gonna go wrong, I guarantee it. So today I've been taking it a bit easy. Well, I haven't been filming today because after the stress of everything going wrong yesterday, I just really didn't want to have the pressure of filming myself rectifying all the mistakes I've made. I don't know, my self-esteem had taken a bit of a hit and I was like, I just need to sort this out, pull myself together and get on with it. So one of the things that helped is that my second batch of piping cord has arrived. So I was able to finish some piping that I'd had to abandon. So now I have got my armholes piped and I've got my neckline piped and I've also herringboned down or uh, catch stitched as it's known in the US and flannel stitched, uh, flannel stitch it's also known as. So I've herring herringboned the binding around the neckline down so I've got a lovely finished neck edge now and I've clipped my armholes. I clipped them a bit early. I've still got to attach the sleeves obviously. I kind of forgot about that step but oh well. Um, so the armholes are piped. Both armholes are piped now which is one of the things I had to abandon. Uh, what else went hideously wrong? So I originally piped my cuffs in a straight line and then was going to seam them together and then I decided that that was really bulky and a stupid thing to do so I've actually remade all my cuffs so that they were made up as a circle and then I added the piping. Uh, so these are for the wrists, they're very snug but thankfully this is a stretch sateen so I should still be able to get them on and they're very narrow so I've had to do a lot of uh, seam allowance grading, which I don't usually do because it makes things less alterable. But this is going to be a very narrow cuff. Can you see that? Um, which is okay, because I've seen some fashion plates with very narrow cuffs, but I was expecting. On my half scale, I don't know if you can see, this is the police robe pattern from Janet Arnold, 1824 to 27. And I was expecting to have these sort of wide cuffs that if I put her arms off it doesn't work, they fit low over the hand like that. Um, so that's what I was expecting from this uh, laughing moon pattern. Turns out I'm not getting that, I'm getting these dinky little things instead. Uh, which is fine, I'm okay with that. Um, so yes, so I've got, these are the, for the long undersleeves and then these are fractionally wider, these are for the uh, short oversleeves and then as you might have seen, I've still got it here actually, I had an absolute disaster trying to turn through these armbands. These are together in the long sleeve below the end of the short sleeve and I'd originally tried to bang them out and it didn't work. So I've recut these, remade these, I had to make more piping and unfortunately that means I've now got a seam in my bias somewhere there. Uh, but you can't really tell, can you? And they're a little bit wobbly, uh, a little bit uneven, but I'm kind of okay with that. I don't think that's really gonna notice. Yeah, I think it should be fine. So with these complete, I ended up, what I ended up doing for these instead was making them essentially like a waistband, sewing two edges, flipping one, pressing it under, and then slip stitching it. You can probably just see the little puckers, yeah. 
to see where I've hand stitched it. Oh, which I mean, it's gonna have to be slip stitched onto the sleeve itself anyway, so I'm not that worried about that, but yeah, it just, it feels really good to have all these bits for the sleeves done. And now I can start on constructing the sleeves and I actually feel like I'll be making progress rather than just in this weird piping hell. Being so behind, like where's where's my original time scale? Hang on. The only thing I haven't fixed is the fact that I sewed the collar onto the chemisette wrong. Uh, and I've decided that I'm just gonna leave it because actually the fabric is so delicate. I don't have a lot of seam allowance. I had to trim it all away. And if I unpick it, it's probably gonna completely unravel and I'll have a mess. So I'm just gonna have to live with the fact that the body of the chemise is inside out. Oh well, but what was I saying? Yeah, so today is the 12th, and according to my original time scale, scale I should have uh, attached the Rulu trim to the skirt today, having completely finished the bodice and the sleeves. So obviously we're not there, <laughs> but I have made a new time scale, and I do think I still might just be able to finish in time for the Foundations Revealed competition, but I don't know whether I'll have time to make a bonnet, which is annoying because I've bought all the materials for a bonnet, but I mean, this outfit will need a bonnet, so it's not the end of the world, but I just, just wanted a bonnet. You know, I wanted the whole ensemble, proper costume. But anyway, so the last thing I'm gonna do this afternoon is I'm going to make up the short sleeves and attach the bands and so that they're made up and ready to fit into the bodice tomorrow. I doubt I'll get in the short sleeves um, today, because sleeves are pretty time consuming and I don't really want to start doing those. Uh, this is, it's four o'clock now, which if you've watched a lot of my videos, you will know tends to be my lowest ebb in the day in terms of fatigue. So I don't like to start anything tricky at this moment in the afternoon, which is frustrating because it normally means, I normally work till about six. So um, yeah, normally it means that like I've got, quite often I've got two hours at the end of the day where I can't really start anything. I don't really know what to do with myself. But yeah, I think I can make up the sleeves ready, sewing the gathering stitches, things like that. All right, so I'm gonna crack on with that now. So I'll be, um, I haven't filmed, so that was why I haven't filmed this, but I imagine I will take you through the next part of this process now that I'm back on the right track. I might go and make myself a cup of tea first though. Cup of tea made, I stitched two rows of machine gathering stitches around the sleeve heads of both the long and short sleeves and along the bottom edges for the cuffs. Amazingly, my bobbin ran out at the best possible time, having already stitched one line of gathering. So I rewound the bobbin before I carried on with the gathering stitches. I joined the seams in the short sleeves matching all the markings, then press those seams open. I pulled on the gathering threads to draw up the bottom of the sleeve to fit the cuff, but the fabric was so thick that I couldn't get the sleeve to gather nicely and the threads snapped. So I resorted to a different gathering method, zigzagging over a length of button thread to create a sort of channel then pulling on that button thread to gather the sleeve down. This was much more successful. I decided to concentrate the gathers towards the middle of the sleeve instead of have them evenly spaced for a bit more visual impact. To check I was happy with the way it looked, I pinned the sleeve into the bodice and tried it on the mannequin. Only it was hard to tell what the sleeve would look like without an arm in it, so I tried it on myself, but I got on the wrong side of the pins. I added the pattern piece for the pelerine to see how I felt about the proportions and was starting to feel that this project might actually turn out how I had envisioned it. I repeated the making process for the other cuff, gathering the sleeve down to fit the cuff and then tacking and sewing it in place. I graded out as much of the flat lining as I could to reduce the bulk. This was tricky where I'd already gathered the fabric down. I also graded the seam allowance of the sleeve and of the piping so I could cleanly roll the cuff around to the inside along the seam line and press it into place.
More seam allowance grading, this time for the raw edge of the cuff that was to be turned under on the inside. Once clipped, I turned that raw edge under to meet the stitching line and pressed it in place. With waxed double thread, I then slip stitched the turned under edge of the cuff in place on the wrong side. I was very careful to only catch the flat lining layer of the sleeves so that the stitches wouldn't show on the right side. I pinned and then tacked those short sleeves into the bodice. I had to redo the gathering threads for the sleeve heads as well, zigzagging over a button thread to gather it down to fit the armhole. I then carefully machined the sleeves in using my zipper foot to get as close as possible to the piping around the armhole as I could. I usually machine my sleeves in two halves, but I couldn't do that on this project as I needed to be able to see the stitching line for the piping, so I went very carefully and slowly to avoid puckers and tucks. Of course, I had to redo the piping on the armhole that was too short before I could sew in the second sleeve. With the short sleeves sewn in, I knew I wanted to make the long under sleeves detachable, and that meant I would need some way to attach them to the bodice. The method I settled on I actually learned from Nikki Liam's channel. She made interchangeable sleeves for her 1830s dress and added an armhole facing to be able to sew them in more easily. I traced the shape of the armhole to create my facing pattern and then made it, I think, five centimeters wide all the way around. I then cut the facing piece from both the white cotton flat lining and a scrap of purple sateen. I tacked the two layers together with long diagonal basting stitches before flat lining them together on the overlocker. Next, I joined the underarm seams and pressed them open and the facings were ready to go. Now I had to turn my attention to the long undersleeves themselves. I stitched two lines of gathering stitches at the sleeve hem to gather them into the cuff, but for the sleeve head, I used the same technique as before, zigzagging over a length of buttonhole thread. I was drastically running out of thread at this point, and I knew it was only a matter of time before I ran out completely. I tacked the sleeve under arm seams together by hand to save on thread, and then quickly pinned them into the armhole so that I could decide on the placement of the bands. I put the bodice on the stand to do this, but it turned out I needed an arm inside the sleeve to get the right blousing effect. So I put the bodice on myself and then struggled and faffed about trying to get these sleeve bands and Rulu trim in the right place. The Rulu trim is just a bias strip folded in half lengthways and then turned right side out. You can also hand sew them from the right side, but I machined mine for speed. Positioning the trim was particularly difficult at the cuffs, but I did manage to get something like the effect I wanted. I then took the sleeve off and trued up all those lines, marking them in with tailor's chalk. I was actually surprised at how straight I'd been able to pin these things. Making clothes for yourself is really hard at times. Having decided on the placement, I stitched in two lines of gathering stitches at each point where the sleeve was to be gathered down. I then gathered the sleeves down to the required length for each piece of Rulu trim and slip stitched the Rulu in place hiding the gathering stitches. When finished, the sleeve cuffs looked like this. The Rulu turned out quite wrinkly. The stretch of the sateen on the bias made it pucker quite a lot, but I made my peace with it. Before I could attach the sleeve bands, I needed to finish the raw edges. I could have gotten my overlocker out for this or zigzagged it on the machine, but the overlocker is heavy and I didn't have the strength to get it out and I was so low on thread, I decided to just over sew the end by hand instead. I gathered up the sleeve where the armband was going to be attached and then adjusted the gathers to fit the length of the band by pinning it in place at both ends and then stretching out the gathers to fit. Of course, they didn't stretch out evenly, so I spent some time redistributing the volume of the gathers before pinning the band in place over the top of the gathering stitches. I then slip stitched the band in place along both edges. Here I'm doing an even slip stitch, so I'm basically just weaving the needle in and out of the two layers I'm attaching before pulling the thread through. And of course, repeat for the other side of the band and the other sleeve. 
I did all this work while the sleeve was flat as I knew it would be much easier, so now I had to join the sleeve underarm seam, carefully making sure that applied decoration matched up. Only you can see that even my really quite heavy duty Bonina sewing machine was struggling to get over these really bulky sections with the double layer of trim. So I got out this little plastic thingy that I only know colloquially as a hump jumper. Basically, you sew to the point where the fabric is too bulky for your machine to cope, leave the needle down, but lift the presser foot, and slide the hump jumper in behind the needle, and then drop the foot down onto this little bit of plastic. And it means you can sew over these bulky little things. So once again, if you missed it, this time with the sleeve band. Needle down, press a foot up. This band was particularly chunky, so I struggled to get the hump jumper underneath the presser foot behind the needle. Press a foot back down again, and away we go, sewing over this super thick section of the sleeve. Do you know, I'm starting to despair a little bit with this project. <sighs> this is all the thread I have left. All of it. Because I did so much unpicking, there's a lot of gathering on this, so I had to do, you know, loads of gathering stitches and had to redo my gathering because it didn't work because the fabric was too heavy, so I had to just pull a whole load of gathering stitches out. Yeah, so I've gone through 250 meters of thread already. And obviously this is a really specific shade of purple. It's also the natural cotton as opposed to the sew all thread for uh, historical accuracy or whatever reason I chose this. I think I chose this because the color was a better match actually, to be honest. But yeah, with it being such a specialist and unique type of thread, it's really difficult to get hold of. So I have finally been able to track down 100 meter reels of this thread color from um, Guterman. And uh, of course it's locked down, so I have to wait for it to arrive and the postage is delayed. So I've done everything I can. I had a bobbin full of thread left, well, like half a bobbin worth of thread left and the top reel ran out. So I unwound some of it back onto the reel so I could carry on sewing. And I've done mostly hand sewing today, but this is really like, um, you know, half a meter of thread left probably. So I really can't do any more on this project. Well, I can't do any more sewing at least. There's some cutting things. I have to cut all the bias trim for the decoration, of course, which now I'm looking at however much yardage I've got left. I really hope it's enough because knowing me in this project, it's probably not enough. So I might go and check if um, they've still got this fabric in stock at Minerva. So I can do that, but it's the 15th today, which means it's just under three weeks. I'm looking at my calendar up here. It's just under three weeks to the Foundations Revealed competition deadline. It's getting really tight. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Bearing in mind, I also have to do all the, I have to take a, have to do a photo shoot and that is dependent on energy and mobility. So, you know, just if I push through to meet this deadline, uh, the likelihood of me being able to get dressed up and go and take some nice photos of it is quite slim because I'll be so exhausted from panic sewing. So I'm in a really tricky place. So I really don't know what to do. My millinery supplies have arrived to make a bonnet. So I might divert my attentions now to the bonnet. My thread, I was able to find a thread with a first class delivery option. So um, let's see when that gets here. It said it was dispatched today but it's the weekend so beginning of next week probably earliest the 19th maybe is 18th 19th is what we're looking at probably for my thread arrival so i've got a weekend can plan and cut my trim i can also start work on this bonnet yeah i'll have to i'll, I'll just have to wait and see when the thread gets here really on the plus side it is looking really cute i'm really pleased with it so far I might put what I've done so far on the stands so that I can sort of look at it and feel a little bit of accomplishment. After all that, the thread actually arrived the next day, the 16th. Yes, I'm in my pajamas in this clip. I was so excited. I just had to rip the parcel open as soon as possible. I tell you, I really needed this little win at this point in this project. It finally felt like things might be going my way. I could then get on with the final stages of making up these undersleeves. 
I pressed open the underarm seam, being careful not to press my rulu in opposite directions. I then made the decision that these cuffs were just too small and fiddly to get under the machine, so I backstitched them on by hand. I then rolled them around to the wrong side, like I did for the short sleeves, and slip stitched them in place on the inside. I could then attach the sleeves to the armhole facings I had made earlier. These would then be tacked in place with a few stitches at a later date, but I knew I wanted to wait to do this until after I had taken photographs of the short sleeved version of the dress. So there we have it, the short sleeves are in and the long sleeves are ready to go when I need them. I can't lie, these sleeves were such a struggle. It wasn't even the sleeves themselves that was the issue, it was those bloody sleeve bands. The sleeves fit perfectly and were actually quite successful, it was just the decoration that made it so much more complicated. I mean, it was my own fault because I tried to bag those things out when I knew I shouldn't have, but still, it's annoying. Even though it was a struggle, I am really pleased with the way they look when made up particularly the long sleeves. I love that I was able to include those little details to represent handcuffs, and from a practical point of view, I feel that having those two looks in one, the day and the evening bodice, I will potentially get more wear out of this outfit. The next part in this series will be the making of the skirt, but if you can't wait that long for your Regency fix, you can check out the Relaxed Regency playlist and take a look at all the other wonderful projects that people have been making as part of this sew along. With that, all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching, see you next time.